Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Cast Revive, your weekly top five VGM podcast. I'm your host, Matt Heimerl, and here with the man that wishes Celine Dion's My Heart Would Go On would be his ending theme, Steve Monselsi. This None of that is true. <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> and with us once again is Mr. 99, behind the mic and audio, Brian Oski. Hi. Yes. Ending themes. And I started dancing immediately when the song came on, because even though I'd never beat Radiata stories, as soon as he started playing this music, I knew exactly what it was from. Nice. It, just, it has that I love when games just have that they have that sound. As soon as you hear it, I know exactly what game that's from just because that music is just a current throughout the whole game. It's not like a bunch of different, you know, musical variation. Sure. It's just like the same tune and jingle, but like through the whole thing. So I do want to go through Rowdy Otter stories. Sure, I had okay. a lot of fun playing uh, the couple hours that I did when I was living up north. A couple hours. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I remember getting it because you told me about it, and I was yeah. living up in Penn Salem in Pennsylvania, and uh, I walked over to a GameStop, and I was like, you know, I'm going to pick this up. I heard good things about it. And I started playing it for a while. I was like, yeah, yeah, I could get into it. And I, and I don't remember why I just stopped playing it, but it wasn't because I didn't I didn't like it. Short attention span. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably because we got back into City Heroes. We were doing something. I was like, all yeah. right, this is where it's going. Uh, th- that's the problem with RPGs and stuff. Well, like MMORPGs. Anything that you play for like a long period of time right. like, kills cool games like Rowdy Otis yeah. No, I agree. So I actually just started um, Tales of Graces F. But, and talk about Tales games going on and on and on. And, yeah. all, and games sounding alike. There's a yeah, lot of yeah. Tales games, aren't there? Oh, yeah. There's like 10, 15 of them. Starting wow. when? It's Tales of Destiny for the PS1. Wow. Nice. That's a lot. There's a lot of games. I have all of them except for Tales of the Abyss. I don't have that. I don't Seems have that like game. the one that you would have. Yeah, you would think. <laughs> <laughs> so so tonight we chose ending themes because next week is going to be our finale, name that tune that we're going to do. So we figured since we can't do ending themes on our end of our finale, we figured we'll do it the episode prior and kind of talk about... You know, and any themes there, anything that happens after the the boss fight, you know, final credits, final, you know, final movie cutscene, things like that. So, and it was hard because you know we've beaten a lot of games, and there's a lot yep, of that is true. A, as me. with as with every, <laughs> yeah, probably like I, I that, beat, that's why you're not on the mic, sir. I, I beat Minecraft and Stardew Valley. Thank you. <laughs> games with no end. I've beaten them. <laughs> yes, you've broken it. But it, it was a th- this was fun though because it's you're not. It's it's something it's something different, you know, because you're trying to figure out tracks that like motivate you through like the game. Instead, it's like, all right, we have to pick a track that's going to sum up everything that we've just done. And uh, sometimes it's a hit, and sometimes it's a miss. Well, well, that's a good question, you know. And I'll throw this out to you guys and any of our listeners too. Which do you think is more important? Like, do you think the the boss, the final boss fight music is more epic? Should be more epic, or the the ending theme that's the culmination of everything you've done and it's just like the final like you can exhale kind of thing you know which is more important <laughs> brian go not the boss fight because i never hear it because i'm always so like worried about beating the boss yeah, and that's then true i can relax and enjoy yeah. the ending video and then the credits music and stuff like that i, I remember when i was when i was working at pizza hut uh many many years ago well, when Final Fantasy VIII came out, so you can imagine how long oh, yeah. how long ago that was, and uh, it took me. I, I, I called and worked and I'm gonna be late because I'm I'm, I'm 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 just running late. But I was fighting. I was fighting. I was fighting the deal. I was I was I was at I was at the end, and um and I beat it. And I was like, I can't be late any longer. So I just I had to leave. And the ending movie just like went. So when I came home, I had to redo it all over again just mm. so I could watch it because I didn't get a chance to enjoy it. So I'll, I'll tell you what. I, that, is a, was, that is a long ending. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I was not a fan. Uh, I'm, pu- I'm putting up quotes here. A fan of Final Fantasy VIII. That's one of my least favorite ones. I like the game. I, that's just not one of my higher ranking Final Fantasy games. But the ending for that with the the almost like real life yeah. cut scenes that were like, uh, 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 and that, yeah, it yeah. was amazing, like jaw dropping for me like that. They need to make a game that looks like that. Yeah. And, you know, and. And it was Ultimisha, not Adia. That was the yeah. end. And Zell chokes so on I, hot dogs. So I, yes, and Zell chokes on hot dogs. Yes, he does. That, that little yeah. ongoing joke throughout the entire <laughs> game, how much he loves hot dogs. And then... Uh, A sense of euphemism. <laughs> it could be. It could what be. was his name? Zell? Zell. Zell, yeah. yeah. But you can't, because Zell is like Sabin, and Sabin 
you know, suplexes trains. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, you can't. Are you saying that hot dog lovers can't suplex trains? Uh, I would say 53% be of the careful, time, yes. Be careful, be <laughs> careful. In line, in line. <laughs> danger, danger. Bail. Bail. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was a... Uh, that that was a fun experience. <laughs> that was a fun experience. What, what one of the worst? Being one of the worst forward. for gaming because it's like you know. I was just like you know, normally I would have been like whatever. I'm just gonna call in like last minute, but I was like I really had to go in. But at the same time, like oh my god, I fought this. I fought this battle like eight times, and now I beat it right as I have to go to work, not knowing that it was like a 45 minute end cut scene. So yeah, it was yeah. okay. Came, uh, that came was home with thing. a couple pizzas and breadsticks and just chilled out. That yeah. was one thing I liked about the Final Fantasy series. They kind of gave you an ending for like what, because because you know each character has their own story and you pick people yeah. up, you know, in, at different times. So it's kind of cool to see that even though you guys are all working together, mm-hmm. what do they do outside of that? So you yeah. see, like after you beat the last boss of whatever, this person goes off to do this, but this person goes off to do that, you know, and you get to watch all that. You're like, oh, that's kind of. It all kind of comes together. You, know, yeah. you have some closure to it. It does because you also have to realize that, uh, and, and especially in eight, they're all just kids. So like during the game, like they're all like trying to make these adult decisions to fight, but afterwards they're just joking around, playing, falling in the water, and it's just like they're, right. they're just they're, they're you get kids. this playful humor back again, like like the you know uh, their challenge is done, so they can just relax and be themselves. Right. And, and and they should do that because it's like normal killing school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, and they should do that because it's like it'd be like reading a novel, and then like and then these guys just and. That's it. Yeah. Oh, wh- what? Yeah. <laughs> they just went through hell and back. You're not going to tell me like what they went on. Like, did he become a serial killer or something after what he's seen? Or like, what happened? Like the end of the movie Kickboxer with Sean claude Van Damme. Exactly. Most abrupt ending ever. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Jodie Foster? No? Jodie Foster? <laughs> let's go ahead. Was she in that? All right. So, <laughs> no, let's go <laughs> <laughs> that was your first movie. If she wasn't, she should have <laughs> been. That's who Sean Claude fought against at the end was her. <laughs> Here's I, I put my money on Jodie Foster. <laughs> I, I like Jodie Foster. So uh, I, I'm first this week, right? Yo, you're first. All right, let's do it up. Get to NES. the chopper. Uh, uh, this, this game is one of is one of the greatest side scrollers of all time. It, it is. It is absolutely the definition of a classic. Yes. Yes. And it's brutal. I mean, the, my, the thing I loved about this game is it went from the side scroll perspective to the front yes. when you when you enter the bases. I love that change because it was it was so unexpected back then when you were go you're like all right and then it's like whoa well, completely that, different view. I never understood in that game like why do those guys go frolicking into the room? <laughs> like they go jumping when the across. turrets are firing. Yeah. Just- <laughs> <laughs> and there was like hey hey. <laughs> What? <laughs> Shoot this guy here. He's got a power up for you. Come yeah. on. <laughs> That's our lieutenant. Kill him. <laughs> Did he just try to juke us? Like, what is he doing? <laughs> oh, man. Con- I- we were doing another project. Conch was actually a game that I tried to start speedrunning through. And basically, if I-, I you need a turbo controller to, like, mash how quickly you have to kill yeah, these bosses. Red gun. Well, it's red gun. Need. Well, yeah, but I mean, you still have to... <laughs> Yeah, so you get an, an NES Max or the NES Advantage. I have both. I'll give you two. And have a turbo button. Yeah, but they're not allowed in the category I was running. Says who? Says says you know. It says Universal Standards. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, the original Konami code usage. Yes. Was for Contra. Absolutely. But it wasn't down, it w- down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and if you're playing two player, select, start. Yeah. Did you ever? Did Did you? Play this a lot, two player with people, or would you say majority? I don't of have friends. <laughs> I could see you just like playing two player, and your hand is literally on the only one. Come on, Frank, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing my invisible friend, and he's winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How is this possible? Why does he have a higher score than me? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Your mom just between walks that and Ninja Turtles two. <laughs> what? I can see you. your mom walks in the room and is like, what are you doing? And you're like, the TV's off, the controls aren't even plugging. You're just like, we're playing, Ma. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> There's our special little boy. <laughs> uh, and that's where love for video games began. 
Con- Contra was, con- you know, getting back to Contra, Contra was a, a great game, and, and the whole series, you know, Super Contra was amazing, um, and they all follow the same pattern, and then they start getting to the, the 3D realms, like mm-hmm. when you start playing with the Shattered Super Sol- There was Shattered Soldier for PS2, right? That, isn't that what it was so called? That, uh, was that for the PS1? Was it PS1? I think it was the PS1. Because it was Alien Wars for the third one. Well, the third one that was, was on the Ga- Super NES. The su- uh, was that was Super NES? Yeah, okay. Super NES. And then there's Contra Hardcore, which wasn't technically a true Contra game. But and, uh, there's also Contra Force for the NES. Yes. It's, it is a very rare... I, 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 I hate to say this, but I do have it. Nice. And it is actually very, very... I, I bought it when I saw it. I have never even seen it again. Wow. Not even like, oh, that's cool. They had that. No, I've never even seen it again. So. Well, look behind you. There's 12 copies sitting what? right there in box unopened. <laughs> Found out a fleece so yard sale for one Slow cent. neck break. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> well, out of all the Contras you played, do you, have a, do you have a particular favorite? Super Contra. Super Contra? It is my favorite. Super Contra is awesome. Yeah. I, it, it basically was Contra. It just told the story a little bit better. Yeah. And, 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 and now, granted, Contra came out before stories were really involved yeah. in games and stuff Not like really that. Thing. So, but but once they did, you're kind of like, okay, I, I see where this is kind of going. And, right. you know, it's, it's kind of like the difference between Commando and then Bionic Commando. Mm, gotcha. So it's like, okay, they had the same kind of thing, same people, but now they have a story driving it and. It makes it more interesting. About a year or two ago, remember Brian when we did the the Contra Strong video, mm-hmm. the parody on the Army Strong. Yeah, <laughs> Brandon and I dressed up as guys from Contra, and we did like a whole like commercial Billy for it. And it was probably Jimmy, Jimmy, <laughs> Billy and Jimmy, Billy the and Contra Jimmy. guys. Because it was like Jimmy and somebody else for Double Dragon. It was always a Jimmy and somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the guys who were meant to look like Arnold and uh, yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, Akari Warriors was also known for that. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's always red and it's always blue. Always. Always, it was just easier for the color palettes because you know there's nothing really in backgrounds at the time. Yeah, that yeah. had those colors, so you were automatically instantly identifiable when you're playing on screen. Yeah, good. That sounded technical, didn't it? It, it wow. did. I liked it. In fact, I little think we, something. I think we just ended on a high note right yeah. there. We'll go ahead and jump into your top. That was really good, by the way, because I love Contra. Contra is a really good series, and Contra loves you. So I'm going to say this about my number five. People who have played it would rate this as one of the best RPGs ever played. Yep. If you disagree, you simply have not played it. I have not played it. it or is, you don't have a soul. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of the most underrated yet most captivating RPGs that they've ever made. And it is Earthbound for the Super NES. Or as it's known in Japan. As Mother. Mother. Ma- madre. Madre. This game was actually so amazing that when it was released, the box was actually had the its own player manual that came with it. Oh, really? So, that's like, you know, like, you, so yeah, that, that's why the box was big because it had a that's the one, 128. You have that in your shelf, right? You, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to think. I was like, wait a minute. I know I've seen that. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. so it makes sense. Because it comes with a 128 page strat guide. Yeah. Nice. It came with it. That's how epic it was at the time. You're like, wow, this is great. And you kind of needed it. Yeah, you really did. Yeah. And, and this game was like so basic as far as graphics are concerned. Nothing, yeah. nothing to really talk about. But what made it? It was so intensely popular in certain circles that and Ness is all over the place. He's in Super Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, he has psi abilities with his baseball bat, and yeah, which you upgrade. And uh, Lucas as well is also in from uh, Earthbound, and he's also in Super Smash Brothers. So who is, is that? His brother? No, no Lu- Lucas friends. is in. Lucas is in the. Mother 3, Earthbound 2. He's, oh, like, okay. he's the Ness in the next game. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha. Yeah. The, it, usually it's uh, like Puka is like this martial mm-hmm. artist guy. Poop. And there's, uh, yeah, there's a, a girl, I forget Paula. her name. Paula. And Jeff. Yes, that's yeah. it. Nice. And they'll have psychic abilities, and that's no. all, all their stuff is based off of. And you're fighting an alien force that's kind of taking over, and you can teleport and do all kinds of cool stuff. But they have, like, all these little things that are nods to things like that. They have, like, their own version of the Blues Brothers. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, in in the game up. and stuff <laughs> like that. And it's, like, it's got, like, something five. <laughs> Wasn't it the band? Yeah. The, aren't they, like, the Traveling Fire like or the, the Missing Fire, fire or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but one of the cool things is, and, and this is a spoiler, but it's really awesome, and I have to share it. When you beat the last boss, Gygus, mm -hmm. the game ends. When you, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. No, but when you beat the game, you know you're playing as Ness, and when you play RPGs, you are essentially that main protagonist. Yeah. And it revolves around them, so you kind of are them. Well, in this game, you beat the game with Ness, and as the boss is dying, the the things that you save, the Saturn, Mr. Saturns, the sa yeah. and stuff like that, start summoning names. In the beginning of the game, you forget that you type your name in. Right. And the beginning of the game, and all of a sudden, they start calling you. So it's oh, like, really? Steve, Steve, you know, and then you're like, what? The game's like talking to me. And it's yeah. you are the one, the player, who actually frees all these people from from the the rampant rage of Gygus. It's really well done. I mean, that sounds so simplistic, but if you played through the game and you're invested in it and you see this stuff happening, like, that's a really cool that's touch. Neat. You yeah, know, it's neat. nice. And uh, you, you're aware of all of this happening because of a alien fly, right? Isn't Buzz Buzz the one that like comes and he's like, "Yeah, Gaius is gonna come and destroy the planet if you don't do something about it." Something like it's that. It's a little, um, it's a little fly, and then you like go to your like neighbor's house and the, like the fly is like flying around the mother and she swats it and kills him. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought it was that something was like buddy. your. I thought it was something like your dad calls you on the phone. That's how you save the game. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Because well, that's and that's how you start the game too. Yeah. So he said he puts all your money is in an ATM account. Yeah. So like your father, who you never see in the game because he's out doing stuff, is always just sending you money in your ATM. Yeah. So like you kill monsters and you still get money and experience stuff like that. But then he, oh, by the way, I dropped off like fifteen hundred bucks in your account. Hey man, you're awesome. Go, Dad. Nice. <laughs> you yeah. know. So so it's, it it takes place like at like a modern time. Yes. It's it's, not yeah, it's all modern and, and like. The way that you like use like healing items and stuff, it's all food, and like then it. you can like make the food better if you like pair it with a condiment. Yeah, so oh, if nice. you eat, like a hamburger and you put ketchup on it, it like heals for more. That's really cool. <laughs> That's Except really for cool. Pooh, he he gets the same amount of health like no matter what he eats, and he's like your martial artist. He's, he's a got martial artist. yeah. He, he's give me that rock. <sighs> you don't really give him any weapons or anything like that. He just is. He's like a monk. He's and his a, name he's a is Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a really I cool <laughs> running <laughs> teleport thing. You run in a circle, like in you know, a certain things, and as you can get enough speed, you and you you can warp to wherever you want. It's pretty cool. Were there any like, not like summons or anything, but were there like any like aid, like special, like how like trigger would have like you could like link together and do like special attacks or anything? Like, was, or was it just no. the one character that you you fought with? Or did you no, have, no, like, you have four people. Oh, four, four people. Four. Yeah, and they all had magic, which is psi, They're your psi yeah. ability. So like you know, Paula was like your healer kind of person. She oh, would gotcha. pray and like. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's who she, she you don't realize until in the game, but she prays to you mm -hmm. to heal oh, nice. you, the player. That's cool. Yeah, and like, doesn't um, so you're a deity. <laughs> don't isn't there like a the smash attack? Do I get like yeah? Well, well, smash attacks your critical hits. The critical hit. Yeah, right. it, it, it's just a smash. And you're like, oh, that's nice. And you had yeah. a bat the whole you game. You break right? off. You, uh, well. Ness does. Yeah, Ness. Gets Ness. Nice. Ness has like you start with like the home run bat, and then it's like a uh, like at first like it's a wiffle ball bat, yeah. and then you upgrade to like the home run bat, and then like a uh, an aluminum bat, and then you have like the the all the, the purple one, the, the magic bat, the bat, the bat yeah. with the nail in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes like, criminal. Come here. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, really good, really, really, really good game. Nice. When I know how it ends, I st I still want to play it. I'd like to. I, I, I've seen it played a lot, and it always has interest me i just i'd never there are so many games i want to play and I, I didn't play as many rpgs growing up i was you know fighting games and, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that yeah. So, instant so gratification th games yeah i mean well to be i mean other than like six i mean seven probably said was really my first introduction into like big rpgs mm -hmm. you know i played like breath of fire and i played secret of mana but i didn't own those systems so i played them with a buddy of mine so but like playing by myself you know i, I missed a lot of those growing understandable up, so. there were there wasn't very many Good RPGs for the Genesis. You had Fancy Star, and you had like sort of a million. Yeah, and I'm to go to Wild Arms as well. You it. know, <laughs> so there's there's a lot. But all right, so so that's that's <laughs> Earthbound. Good choice. I liked it. I know Brian was extremely excited that Earthbound made it to the list. He's like, he's still vibrating. Uh, I there. love Earthbound. Yeah, 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 so it's good. really good. <laughs> and the music for the whole game is very quirky. It's very like. It's kind of weird, like electric, electronic sounding, and yeah, it is really strange, but it it strangely fits too. You like, like you know, you know what I would compare it to? Psychonauts. Matt's never played Psychonauts. Never played Psychonauts. I thought you did. I thought you said, "Oh, yeah, I love that game." 
Mm. Mm. No. I, I own it. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the posters All right, fine, of it. Fine, fine, moving on. I own it in case with instructions. So. <laughs> fine, <laughs> moving on. Yay. All right, so let's go ahead to your number four. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Post note. One of my favorite games ever, The Legend of Dragon. I like that needs to be said. <laughs> this, the soundtrack for this game is amazing from beginning to end. And I was talking to Brian about it earlier. This is a game I've played so many times, but literally have only beaten all the way through one time. And it, it's a game I want to go through again so bad because what? Re- listening to the music again and watching like the ending scene and I was like oh my god you just you forget how amazing this game was and the ending the, the best part see the, the hard thing also about doing ending themes because I want to talk about what happens at the end but people who haven't played it I don't want to spoil things for them but I mean, isn't there a statute of limitations? Like uh, this game came yeah. out, and this game came out yes. in like nine yeah. years. Already so. discussed it. It's <laughs> you know? a year. It's a year. So it's like at the very, very end when you see the um, when you see Rose and uh, Zeke's dragon, the sphere next to each other on like the edge of the beach, right there at the end. It was like that. Just I, I, I literally like freaking balled up like a like a child at that, that point you're like oh yay yeah. let's do dragoon 2 is coming the, oh. and, and, that, and that's what <laughs> and, and that's it i mean i've signed a petition for a prequel and for a sequel <laughs> i would i would love to see a, a game take place during like the wingley war i think that would be awesome you know figure out that let's go and hear zeg and rogue's story you know like like everything up to where she met dar i think that would be awesome you yeah. know figure out more about but i mean the game wasn't popular enough you know? well, which I find that extremely hard to believe. I mean, it's got a greatest hits version of it out, so yeah. they have to sell an X amount to show. It was the voice acting. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what ruined it for everybody. I, I tell you, those attack moves are like, gust of wind dance. Volcano! Like in the ending sequence, listening to, what's her name, Shauna? Shauna, yeah. She's like, no, dart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Just, yeah, the voice acting wasn't wasn't that great. But then again, neither was in Symphony of the Night. Nope, <laughs> it was not good no, at all. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> but um, so uh, Dragoon is a game that, like you said, it, it's it's an underrated game, and I think uh, people gave it a fair chance because it was it was very different. The combat system was absolutely amazing in it. Yeah, absolutely, it, 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 it was unique, innovative. Yeah, unique. and it gave each character a very unique feel. And right. um, other than just the way they looked and the weapons they used, they each had different kind of attacks and. You really had to pay attention. It made you feel like you were really a part of the battle. Just be like, attack, okay, hit, attack. Like I had to pay attention, and then when the enemy countered, and the box turned red, you had to hit it to counter their counter. It just it made you really feel, and it really had to pay attention to what was going on. So it was. Uh. What I love about those strikes, counters, and stuff like that was, depending on who you were playing as, like it actually felt like it belonged to them. So you have Congo, right? He's got a huge axe and everything yeah. else, and he's he's attacking. Well, his range of attacks, like you might have to hit once, and then and then again, and then again, and you're like, okay, so you feel like you're a big guy swinging a big yeah. weapon. Slow right. Weapon. Meanwhile, yeah. you have like Herschel who's in there, like the martial artist, and like all his things are like tap 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 tap. The, <laughs> you know, because he's hit you like a hundred times. That six ring strike, was like cha 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 cha. Six ring strike or whatever. I was like, oh my god, that was, and then. Lavitz's, Lavitz's gust of wind dance. Yeah, with the oh spear. Oh, my God, man. With that spear and stuff. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Is Lavitz the guy in the beginning, or is it another guy in the beginning? Lavitz is in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, and then Albert. Albert. Right. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Pull that right at it. Did you? <laughs> right down memory lane. Just, th- anytime we do that, I just think Harry Potter. When yeah, we're pull, pulling absolutely. The, pulling the memories out and just drop it. Like, a little yeah. pensive, yeah. Yeah. See that? I cried more for Lavitz than I did for Aerith. Just saying. Well, I, I, I can I can see that. I mean, if I would like to see in the prequel how they have Lavitz come to power. Like, how does he? Yeah. 
you know, start because Lavitz was very unexpected. I mean, yeah. I mean, Eris, yes, it was. Like now, no, that was super so it, you, unexpected. You could, I mean, I could kind of see maybe. I mean, any, anytime anybody goes off by themselves. I, there's always there's, there's always it's like a horror movie yeah and it's yeah. just like okay don't you're, split up guys you know you see oh Eric, no so you see, I'll go over here you see her kneeling there and then all of a sudden it goes to a cut scene so I was just like oh god like you know it's like <laughs> Lavitz oh, Lavitz was just like you and then like boom it's like literally just like you didn't have a se- check a second to react yeah. spoiler you know Lavitz dies so <laughs> <laughs> well that, that, they kind of did something like that there's a game for the Sega CD it's called Vi and you have this guy who's like your best friend and he's with you the entire game and right near the end you guys are like charging on this bridge and the main villain just shoots him in the head with an arrow and he's dead he's gone you're like what the shit is this <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's like level 99 he's been like he's taken like hits like no one could believe and then one arrow does him in he's Boromir <laughs> Boromir got capped in the knees or something though didn't he well he got he kind of capped, he got he capped everywhere the, the head yeah. The, yeah, the he got like five arrow. arrows in the chest, and then like that's true. You know, yeah, he did. That'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> forgive me, I could not see. The best character. Oh, poor He's the best. <laughs> that, character. That, 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 if I if I'm gonna die, that's how I want to go out. Hell yeah, saving two children or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Just taking arrows to the chest, man. Like bring it, Hulk style. If Gimli died, that's how he would have died too. By the way, <laughs> not like Legolas who just got beard trampled under an Legolas elephant. Legolas just skateboards shields down steps and just takes people out. Come on, let's get let's <laughs> just get ready. saying. Let's just saying. But yeah, dra- dragon. I mean, like, but, somebody but, has to do that. Somebody <laughs> has to superimpose uh, Legolas on in Back to the Future Two when Marty's going over the water on the skateboard, <laughs> but have like the shield and Legolas on it. Dude, be, that has to happen. That'll be a sh- that should be a shirt. It'll be a t-shirt. <laughs> yep. So if you haven't played Dragoon. You know, or if you haven't played it in a really long time, go back and check it out. I mean, absolutely. the game is absolutely amazing, and the best way to level your characters is with Dart, Meru, and Kongol. Just saying, Meru is the greatest character in that game. Water magic. She was a little like Harley Fairy. Quinn. <laughs> she was a Winley. She was Harley Quinn. She was awesome. Water magic. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And I can't she, argue with and that. And she danced and was very energetic and happy. And I, I, I like those in my, I like that. In my well, like Congo was earth. <laughs> she was water. A dart was clearly fire. And then like what? La, uh, Rose Robert was Lavitz. like void. Yeah, Lavitz was uh, dark magic. Nature. Rose is where you start getting to the weird things. It's <laughs> just <laughs> like yeah, darkness or something. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> and then there was yeah, Lavitz was wind. Right. And then um, Shayna was nothing. Light. Yeah, she was light. Yeah, she was light, but I mean, it's still nothing. She was I mean, the she, light. She, she didn't have a dragoon. She literally was, she? was useless. She did have she a dragoon. Have a dragoon? Yeah, yeah, but the thing, I never used her because her bow and arrow attacks never got any, any weapon additions. She never got any additions. So it was like, I'm just open attacking. No, no. But she, she was the main healer, wasn't she? I never had a healer. I just used my... <laughs> I, Healers? I didn't need one. Healers are for noobs. I, I, well, Lav, Lavitz, Lav, uh, Lavitz had it in dragoon form. He had that, like... That barrier, that, that yeah, oh yeah, barrier. dragoon form. For yeah. as long meanwhile, as that <laughs> meanwhile, hey, healing potions and healing breezes. That's all you need, and the very limited inventory space that you had. So yeah. you had to really choose what you what you needed. And I like that. That was like that's it skillful. Was, right it was there. realistic. Not like I'm going to carry 99 of everything. Like nope, you have like 20 items. But why can. not? I mean, who cares if you can afford it? If you if you worked hard enough to amass the fortune. Then why not be able to have ninety nine of whatever you want? Now I understand where you gonna like, put it. Like oh, okay, like, like ninety nine swords. Like, <laughs> where are you gonna carry all that stuff? They shrink down, man. Bag of holding. Come on, man. D and D. Those healing vials were like were like this size. They were like did two, you not? Well, they were like see, two liters of coke, man. Did you <laughs> did you not, <laughs> did you not the, see Hermione's like purse? Like she pulled out all kinds of stuff from that thing, and she had books and everything. And I'll allow it. Well, this chick in the bag. Ooh. Tricks. Mischief managed. <laughs> right? Is that what we're doing? Should be how we close out our podcast. <laughs> right? Is, <laughs> right? Is that what <laughs> we're doing? <laughs> that's, that's the new one. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's move on to year four before I ruin this thing. Now, Matt, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this with, with the utmost confidence that you have not played this game. 
<laughs> but with just listening to this music, what is it? What kind of feeling does it give you? Like, what 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 can you imagine is going on? Like, what is this game about? I, a lot goes on in this track. Like, it, I, I, I'm guessing at, at this particular point, like what's happening is like you're you're in celebration of just like going up into the sky of Arcadia in your jet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is very close. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is the ending theme for Skies of Arcadia. Ooh. And, um, for the Dreamcast. It, it was Dream. for the Dreamcast, and they released a Legends version, which was uh, for the GameCube. Um, so it is on more than one platform. And I have like a top five RPGs list, and three of them <laughs> are on my top five nice. here for, for a reason. Um, I don't pick the games as far as like my favorites based on popularity. I, I just based on them on what I enjoyed, you know, mm-hmm. like Earthbound again. Um, but Skies of Arcadia was a very underrated RPG that was simply amazing. It is you start as Vice, and he is an air pirate, and uh, to a he's the son of a family of air pirates. Special kind of air pirate, though. Is his brother's name Versa? Vice versa. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's his full name. Turn actually. off his mic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mute <laughs> coming in. <laughs> they only attack other sp- special kinds of uh, pirates. Pirates, right? I believe so. They're not bad guys. They're, They're good not, guys. Yeah, they, 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 good they, and well, here's the, the thing about it: the worlds that you play in is very much like Skyward Sword, where everything's kind of in the air. There is no land per se. Everything's like a floating island or, well, that's it. They're a floating island. And what's really kind of cool is, like, as you start to upgrade, your, you get an airship. And you actually have naval battles in the sky as you're flying to different areas because it's free roaming. And, you know, when you're on land and you're walking around, it's like a normal RPG. But then you have, like, naval battles. And you can upgrade your airship and get put cannons on it and get different hull armor and all kinds of good. I mean, this is right up your alley. And uh, you can actually make discoveries as you're going. And those discoveries help to buy special equipment and stuff for your airship or weapons for your characters and, and things like that. Uh, like Vice's uh, weapon, I believe he has, like the, uh, he has a boomerang. He Vice? has a sword. He has, uh, a, he has a sword. Okay. And then he also he also gets a boomerang. A little, like, yeah. And then you have uh, this chick from space we'll just say we'll just say I, i'm not going to tell you what she's actually about but she has this little creature um mono that's with him and um he can actually turn into different shapes and those shapes like give her mana power-ups like so she'll have different mana based on whatever color he is hmm. or whatever shape um but it's a fantastic rpg that sounds cool is that uh, do they have a lot of rpgs for dreamcast or was this one of the few? That they actually had a few, um, like uh, e- evolution. Evolution, yeah. Yes, evolution was, was awesome. The, the mechanical arm and stuff like that. Mm. And the butler. The, bu- <laughs> the butler. The <laughs> butler. Um, they had another game too. The name eludes me right now. It wasn't nearly as popular, and the reason why is because the dungeons were never set. They were completely random. So you, your world you lived in was your house and this dungeon. That's it. And every time you left, the dungeon would change. So you'd have to go, you, yeah. I know what you're talking about because I think I actually own it. No, you might. I know I own it. I just can't remember what it is. Oh, and if man. I actually go into my yeah, list, yeah, I think I, I think I know what you're talking about because I think I when I first got my Dreamcast, I popped it in to play it for a while. But were there any other any other games in the in the Arcadia series, or was this was no? This, this, this is just it. This is it. This is it. Now he's made Vice has made appearances. In other ones, uh, Sonic Transformed, Sonic Racing Transformed. You can unlock him as a character. I actually oh, just his, unlocked his car is a little ship, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and cool. the stage he's on is you're racing around like an island, and then the air pirates attack. And no. so as you're racing, thing, parts of the island are blowing up. So now like your ship, tra- your car transforms into a plane, and oh, you're nice. you're riding through the the different battle zones. And Very stuff cool. Like that. Sonic yeah. Very Racing cool. Transformed is actually really cool. Yeah, especially like Alex Kidd. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you can so there was <laughs> races Alex Kidd. <laughs> There was Evolution. There was Skies of Arcadia. Uh, Fantasy Star Online was for the Dreamcast. Oh, yeah. Fantasy Star Online. That's right. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking for that title. Oh, Time Stalkers is the name of the game I'm talking about. Hmm. 
Time Stalkers. Nice. It looks like that. That guy's stalking time hard in that picture. Absolutely. September Another 30th, way to stalk time. 2000. Goodness. That is when it came out. Makes so yeah, sense. so that's uh, that was my Good number choice. four. Worth playing? Absolutely. Definitely worth playing. <laughs> no, it's not worth playing. That's why it's on my list, nerd. I, I would actually put it above uh, Earthbound simply because you can actually find Tales uh, of uh, Skies of Arcadia like versus, or you can't find Earthbound. You can find it on the virtual console for the Wii. There that's true. There you go. <laughs> Attaboy. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I'm playing it these days. Grandia 2, by the way. Grandia 2. Fantastic RPG, also for the Dreamcast. So there were a lot. There were a lot. There were enough. I need to build up my Dreamcast collection. I've only got like four or five games for it. I think, they, I think they only... Oh, I think it's so hard to find. I don't even have that. Um, I think there's only... Power Stone. Oh. I think there's maybe a, maybe 200, maybe less than that games for the Dreamcast. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's not many at all. No. So if you're going to go Dreamcast hunting, you don't have far to really kind of <laughs> go. You've got to find the stores that supply them. That's all. We weren't alive for that long. Bingo. Let's go dive into my past number three far game back. The greatest RTS of all time, Stronghold, for the PC, baby. It's a medieval version, Command and Conquer. And the thing that I really, really, really loved about this game is it had two campaign modes. You had the combative, and then you had an economic campaign to where you had to essentially just build your town, level your taxes, keep people happy, but you had to hit certain certain milestones you had to have your religion to a certain percentage and stuff so there was no fighting it was just all about how so well it was sim city <coughs> with castles with, with, with castles, castles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah gotcha yeah. and then there was like the age of empires version where you can kind of like go kill people if you wanted yeah it was awesome now now could you switch between I, this is coming from someone who's never played the game so is this like could you go one route and then, like, once you got pretty good, you could, like, switch it over and start taking over. Or is it just two, com- two completely, one separate, and completely the separate campaigns? Yeah. yeah. There was a free play mode, though, right? Like a free free campaign mode, like where you could just, like, free build and stuff? I don't know, honestly. I don't know. Hmm. I want to say no, but then I also want to say yes. Because I think I tried playing this at one point. <laughs> so that's and I was nice just solid like, maybe. <laughs> I, every time there's a campaign, I'm just like, no, what, what else can I do that's not the, the required story yeah. mode or whatever? The, the story in, in, in this game was actually really cool because you were essentially losing all your things. By the, the, the main guy was called the Wolf, so he was just pillaging and taking everything. So you, you started in, like, just small little, like, hubble. You had, like, maybe ten people. And you had to start, like, all right, build a fence and just, you know, basically start breeding. <laughs> so you could start building. So then, then you build your archers. You have your lumberjacks that go out and get the wood. You have your hunters. And then, and then you know couple down the road you end up getting like your mason and your stone to where you can really start fortifying your base and you can upgrade your your barracks to have like flame archers and you can have like burn uh uh like scalding oil that you can dump over when people are trying to come in so it wasn't just like uh there were so many additional defenses you could put on like your base i mean it was it was straight out of medieval times i mean it was just it was it was just awesome the way they had it it sounds like a an amped up version of populous populous Yes. Yeah, it's a four-letter word. We just skip it. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> oh, <please. laughs> it was, it's it's oh. But they made a lot of games in this series. There's Stronghold 1, Stronghold 2, then it was like Stronghold Crusader. Then there was I think two more in the series. And they released then they released like the HD versions. Mm-hmm. I have all of them through my through my Steam account. Who's it made by? Um it is made by Firefly Studios. Firefly Studios, yes. Firefly Studios. Yes, yes. And the thing is that I, I, I wish I, I could play the opening theme too, because the opening thing is very it's got like these chanting monks and stuff like nice. that. It's just it's so the music in this game is, is awesome. It's pretty good, yeah. But this end theme just like sums it all up. You're just like What ooh. happens in the ending? We're really it's really just credit scroll. I mean you you, you, you take on So the, there is you, a true ending? Huh? 
So there is a true ending. Yeah, I mean, the, does it differ b- based on what route you went? Is it all the same kind of like? Well, the, the economic one is different. It's just basically like you you've created the perfect the perfect city. And right. Like, so like because you're never under attack. So like, hey, great job. You're you're the king everybody wants and stuff like that. But the other one. You did the final mission. <laughs> You're still the king everybody wants because yeah. everybody else is dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to invade the wolf's castle, and basically you're fighting your way in, building up your armies to attack, and you've got your battering rams and everything just breaking in. So it's just it's just this hard, hard mission. But it's just when you get you know you get in there, and then you're like you're sword fighting them, and then and then you and then you, you kill them and you take it over, and you just basically just like stab the dude right through the chest take him off the castle nice. it's, it's great and then and it's just like you're the, you're badass so like, so it's like the girl so it's like <laughs> running at the last guy of the game and rolling a 20 and just running right through him. essentially <laughs> essentially D D style baby <laughs> so it, 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 it's it's great i mean if if you haven't played it go, go get a steam account and download it it's like <laughs> 10 bucks Maybe like thirty for all the games. I mean, it's not that expensive, and they have it. And they had a multiplayer mode. How, yeah. how long has it been out? Like, it's been around since Windows, like two thousand one. Okay, yeah, so it's been, it's been out for a long time. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So by far my favorite. Even with the other versions that came out later, the original Stronghold is still is still my favorite. So, well, well, the reason I ask is like for those who are looking for it, you know, if if they have the new gen kind of PCs and stuff like that, it may not run. On oh no! Oh no! It will for, for, for Steam. For, yeah. for Steam. Steam. Well, 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 but I'm saying if they had the ori- if they went out to the uh, store and found oh, an original, right, right. Like the ROM, the, right. yeah. they may not. It may not run. Right. So yeah, right. definitely go through Steam. Yeah, yeah, definitely go through Steam. It's uh, it's it's worth it if you're an RTS fan and you're like a medieval fan. You, Real you, time you, simulator. No. Time strategy, real time strategy, dating simulator. Cut his mic off. Dating simulator. Yeah, stronghold the dating simulator. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, you come here. <laughs> why is he now you're never leaving. Jeez. <laughs> oh, why, why, why is he have a, why is he have stronghold? A Boston accent. <laughs> oh, uh, medieval Boston. That's where stronghold took place. We don't know what we're Wait, doing. Wait, isn't that just true? Like in medieval Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Your your uh your number three looks pretty interesting. I'm not gonna lie here. Let this play. (laughs) This is the first game that I've played that when it was done, I stood up and clapped and wept for how great of a job they actually did. And I, 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 you, people say, oh, you're biased. You love Disney. You love Final Fantasy. But Kingdom Hearts is probably one of the best well-imagined games they've ever created. I mean, to take something like Disney. All right, now how can we make these Disney worlds into an RPG and mix it with Final Fantasy and still kind of come up with something that was as epic as it was? Yeah. Bravo to everybody involved. Yeah. No, it was, it was a very fun game. And I'm told the second one is even better and like they expand upon what what they started and i never played the second one i played through the first one and and i had i had a good time with it all the worlds were very unique and everything like that so it it it, it was it was a very fun experience and what what i well and what i mean by like everything i said is like when you're in a disney world okay so say you're in alice in wonderland you feel like you're in wonderland yeah. But when you're interacting with the Final Fantasy characters, you feel like you're interacting with the Final Fantasy characters. Yeah. Like their sprites are realistic as opposed to the cartoony Disney characters. And but they mesh perfectly. Um, the reason why two is is better in a, in a lot of aspects is because when they did one, they were like, "All right, what can we do to improve this?" And they asked the players, and the players were like, "Hey, this would be great. You know, he, Sora is kind of laggy with his with his one Keyblade." It would be cool if he could dual wheel, you know, keyblades and stuff like that. And they like, all right, that, they brought that in there. His uh, mobility was kind of like restricted at times. They fixed all of that, um, you know. And it, it, they also killed amazing. Goofy, so there's that. They did kill Goofy. Gorge, I didn't expect that. 
They d- yeah, the good Goofy impression. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> sure. <Thank you>. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they did kill Goofy, into. But um, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to throw that in there. I was just like, I was so way shocked. To bring, way yeah. to bring the party down. Sorry. <laughs> no, but he he gets better. So anyway, he gets better. <laughs> he, <laughs> he, gets, he comes back. He, he gets better. Somebody cast revive on him. Nice. And hey. Yeah. But no. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts was one of those. The one thing I don't like about Kingdom Hearts, if I have to actually come up with a negative. Leon? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if I had to come up with another negative, it would be the fact that the story for Kingdom Hearts is so all over the place. It's a great story if you could actually find a way to put them in order. You know, because, you know, Kingdom Hearts 1 was the original Kingdom Hearts. But then there's all these other ones, and then they kept it to, to Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, which is a true sequel. And then Kingdom Hearts 2, which is a sequel from that. But then they started, like, Kingdom Hearts, you know, all these Dream different drop, drop distance. distance and, and you have your, your 358 over two. over two days or whatever. Yeah, right? and then all these different things that start taking place up before it and after it and while this is happening. And you're like... Yeah. And then the story becomes very convoluted, and you're just like, All right, maybe I don't actually understand what's going on. Um, so you played Kingdom Hearts. I played okay. the first one, yeah. You played Kingdom Hearts. Yep. Okay. So even though it happened in the game, for some reason, I didn't comprehend the fact that Sora is a heartless. Yeah. Because he gives up his heart to, right, save, to save Kyrie. Kyrie. So he becomes a heartless. So when you play Kingdom Hearts 2, because you will play Kingdom Hearts 2, yeah. You play as Roxas yeah. in the beginning, and you find out that there's a new version of Heartless. And sorry for people that are spoilers out there, but again, this game's been out since forever. Yeah. Okay, early 2000. <laughs> um, the nobodies. They are the nobodies. Mm. And, and for every Heartless that's created, someplace else, there is a nobody formed. And that nobody has its own life and blah, 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 blah but he's never complete because he doesn't have a heart. Mm. And it turns out Roxas is Sora's nobody. And so, yeah, things happen, and you meet other people. There are other people's nobodies, and things start getting really crazy. And then there's links between them. So, uh, like, Namine and yeah. Kyrie and all that other good stuff. But, yeah, Kingdom Hearts and Kingdom Hearts 2, fantastic. Nice. It's nice. important to remember that Roxas likes popsicles, and Sora does not. Mm. Or does Sora like popsicles? I don't think it was ever... Maybe he likes hot dogs. Never established. <laughs> 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 Sora yeah. is Zell's heartless. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I-, I can't say enough good things about the game, though. Good choice, though. It was a fun game. I had a, I had a lot of fun playing it. And you would love to. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, I remember that used to aggravate me in one. Oh, they fixed that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do, I do need to check it. That's something that... Again, backlogs. Which one do I start with? That's the problem. Well, the, all nice the games is, I want to try. The nice thing is yeah. I can lend you. Um, they re-released Kingdom Hearts two in, in like two point five, or it was called. Oh, nice. And it's a collector's thing, but at least you can play it on the PS three. Cool. If you didn't have the PS two for copy of the game, the only Kingdom Hearts game I really detested was um, Chain of Memories, the, because the, it was the sequel to the first one. Yes, right. Because the, it wasn't like. Kingdom Hearts. You actually had cards, like Magic, the Gathering kind of thing. What's well, not to like? And well, you would think that's great, <laughs> except everything you could do was based on these cards. So if you didn't have an attack card, you're done. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's not. Cool. And you can keep reshuffling things, but when things are going on with the same, oh my god, craziness as Kingdom Hearts, and you're trying to shuffle through your deck to yeah. find a card. You're getting walloped left and right. You're like, yeah, annoying. this is just not fun. But the thing is, is so there in, in Kingdom Hearts 2, there's an organization 13. There's 13 yeah, members to it. That, yeah. Well, when I started Kingdom Hearts 2, because I didn't play Chain of Memories because I hated it, <laughs> I was like, why is there only like six people? It's mm. organization 13. Oh, because you fought the other ones in Chain of Memories. Ah, I gotcha. And so, so thankfully, they put flashbacks so that it kind of explains that for those who didn't play it. Because it started getting crazy when they started porting Kingdom Hearts to other game systems. Yeah. Mm. So not like they were going to put Kingdom Hearts 3 on the Xbox One. Why? I mean, great, but the people who followed Xbox never got to play Kingdom Hearts because they were never on an Xbox system before. Right. So I was like, why would you put like halfway through the story <laughs> <laughs> like this, as a starting point? It's well, weird. By that logic, they only have what, like Final Fantasy 13 as well? 
on the Xbox because mm-hmm. yeah. they didn't get ten or twelve. Right. No. Else, right. So. Yeah. True game. True gamers have all consoles. That's right. right. Yes. 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 True gamers. One of us. Or emulators. One all right. Of let's, us. let's go into my number two. Number the best song on this list. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let it play for another second. <laughs> that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the face he was making on the Day Off podcast. <laughs> Uh, Crown of Cross, <laughs> Radical Dreamers. Yay. This song is freaking phenomenal. I mm. am digging on that guitar. Yeah. It, th- I used to listen to this song when I was working at the airport mowing the lawn. I don't know why it would pump me up. Well, every time this song like came on, I was just like, full gonna, blast. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Let's go. I'm going to cut the crap out of this grass, man. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the... Woo! <laughs> that grass don't even know what happened. And see, the funny thing is, is that, you know, as, as I said before, Chrono Cross is a game that I never actually completed. Because I got I got very close to the ending, but my mega memory card shorted out, oh. and I lost everything. Oh. And I, I never restarted to go through. And well, th- then I can't ask you the question I was going to ask you. Uh-oh. That's okay. You can Have ask you Brian. Have you it, Brian? Oh, yeah. Brian's a Chrono, yeah. chrono okay. beef corn. So... Does the ending, as far as this music, change based on whether or not you're able to use the Chrono Cross or not? I don't remember. I don't think you get to see this ending if you don't do it with the Chrono Cross. Ah, see? So it does matter. Yeah. I think you just get like a humdrum ending if you if you kill her. It's like, <laughs> good job. If and I knew this was... <laughs> I would I purposely work to get that Chrono Cross if I got to hear this. This is such a weird ending, though. She's like walking through the streets of Japan, and it's like a real person, isn't it? Okay. I can't remember. I haven't seen it in forever. I, I thought it was like a real like lady, and they just like film her walking around. It was actually me. They it was oh, it was, it was you. Actually, me. They filmed. Oh, oh, well, yeah. I saw okay. your singing ability, so it might have been. <laughs> oh my, like, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Mm. With, yeah, I mean, th- I don't know. I, I I hate talking over these songs because like this is like they're they're so awesome, you know. Yeah. And yeah, there's I really want to beat I really want to beat this game. Because it's definitely it's this is this soundtrack as a whole is absolutely in my top five of, of overall soundtracks. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's some of the best music ever in all of video games. See, this game annoys me, and I've talked. We <laughs> talked about it. <laughs> Whoa, man! <laughs> <laughs> let's let's back it off a little Mute, bit. And then well, we'll master uh, volume. We're looking for a new uh, co-host here. <laughs> no, uh, the reason I said we, I've talked about this before was yeah. because the magic. you the can't. Magic. You, well, well, that, but you can't hundred percent it on your way through. You know, because certain characters are not even available to you until you've beaten it and do other things. So, and, and then and because based on decisions you make, yeah, you, you know, have to you either it's either left or right. One. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like, it, so, <laughs> but new game plus, right? Right. So by your third run of the game, you'll have all the. Characters. So by the third run of your eighty plus hour <laughs> game, uh, but you're also you're also like making it a thing of having to have a hundred percent. You don't need Pierre. Uh, you, uh, uh, you, you don't uh, need. Does he know who he's talking to? <laughs> you don't need the little red-haired kid. You, you just need Korcha. Nobody the chef. needs a little you need red-haired bones kid. And you need Poshel. Korcha. That's all you need. Bones and Poshel. Skelly. Skelly. Bones. Sorry, I was watching. Bones. I was watching Bones, so I had that in my head. Nobody <laughs> needs the red-haired kid ever. Who's the red-haired kid? Is he Korcha? I think he's Korcha, and then his dad's Orcha. No, even in real life, or ever. vice versa. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Who, who's the fairy? What's the fairy's name that I used? Because I used her, and I used the dog. Razzle. Or Razzle. Or Razzly. Or Razzly. Razzly. Like I think that's what it is. Yes. The, the old. Give her the old Razzle Dazzle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love it. You just need turnip. The uh, <laughs> the 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 knight from that's Octonauts. Like, no, he's like a turnip. <laughs> exactly. He's a turnip with the cape. Is that like a play on Onion Night? I think it's a. I think it's supposed to. 
Onion Knight? No, I think it's supposed to be like Frog. Like Frog was a knight that was a frog and turned into Oh, gotcha. Knight so it's a turnip. direct correlation oh, okay. to. Nice. I think so, but then Glenn is also in this game. So right. that, that's a direct correlation to Frog. Right. So it's hard Interesting. to tell. Well, we'll add that to our list of we should all get around together and play it. But anyway. I agree. Chrono Cross. I, I just let this one loop, so we're just going to talk for another five minutes about. <laughs> Steve, Chrono, Steve Chrono just Cross. mentioned your two and one. Why am I going to play anything? We're just going to we're just going to let this go. This <laughs> beautiful woman and her beautiful voice, and this beautiful acoustic guitar, just serenading me into love. And it I love all this of guitar. You. Is it's epic. Be, it's a beautiful track. It really it is. Really is a beautiful track. I think it made the composer cry. It's hard not to. I, it, it makes me cry. I, I it's get just it's, it's just a very well composed piece. I just I, I nice. love it. And it, it's simple, and and it's, it's, there's not a huge orchestra back in it, but it's yeah. just a guitar right. and a woman singing. Like at and one point, there's more women singing, or yeah. her like singing when, times when, five. When they start like, uh, yeah. later on, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, his heart is all a flutter. It is. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, we're gonna have to move on to your number two because. I could t- well, I, I, my number two is going to really suck compared to this one. And, <laughs> I guess, and, how is that not your number one? But you'll man, see my number one gets crazy. A lot of people's what most ha- hated Mario game. <laughs> you go from Chrono Cross. Uh, yeah, that's what I said. I, I was like, oh, man, this is. This is a competition. Well, You'd be done. Well, it did immediately stop my stop Well, my this crying, is the so. part right here that I like the song for. Oh, yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun, bum, bum, when you find out it's all a dream. I love this game. Uh, not a lot of people did. It was uh, my favorite. I, I actually have very fond memories of this, of yeah. this, of this game. Uh, we've talked about it before. My father stood online at Toys R Us like four hours to get this game for Christmas when it came out. Nice, nice. Yeah. Mario Madness. But see, we, we we've mentioned it that usually the the follow ups to the original and a lot of and a lot of the games on on Nintendo weren't enjoyed. Castlevania two, Zelda two, yeah. Mario two. That's because they they deviated from the from the original. And but it's you take it as it is. It's a fantastic game. Yes. And it's super fun. Because it really gave you a chance. It's Super Mario fun. Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> every, th- every time I get on a Brian thought. Brian and I just high-fived across the table. <laughs> Bam! Every time I get on a thought, somebody sends me, and it completely derails me. <laughs> I have no sense of focus. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, as I was saying, you, you know, you got to play as four different characters, and they all yeah. had a different feel to them, and, and it, w- it, was, it was really cool. It was really better than just playing from that, you know, short, fat plumber. You got to, you know, play as his brother and play as... Princess Lady and 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 mushroom, Princess Lady and Mushroom, mushroom Boy Mushroom, mushroom Head <laughs> Boy <laughs> Mushroom Boy Come here <laughs> Coming sir What oh. would happen if like Mario took a bite out of Toad I've always wondered that He'd probably trip really hard <laughs> <laughs> Is it a hat or is it part of his head I don't I don't know <laughs> He just bleeds out <laughs> Yeah I just I just kind of blew up hole in my brain thinking about that right there. <laughs> so what, what was Mario's special ability? Because like everyone had he a wasn't. different thing. He, he, just, he, he was, was just flat out he was, he was the best all around. Okay. So yeah. there was actually a really cool thing. I'm going to throw this at you. Yeah. It, when, in Nintendo Power, when Super Mario Bros. 2 came out, they had a a uh, two-page like picture. And it was like an uh, athletics kind of tournament, like an Olympics. And it kind of showed off everybody's abilities. So you saw like the track that went around right and it was mario running on it he's the best all around kind of character that you had luigi doing the high jump because his jumping ability was the best um toad was he was able to pull things out of the ground fast he was the strongest so really? like normally when like you pull turnips or whatever your character slowed down a little bit because you're carrying something yeah he's his did not oh okay yeah so he was the strongest and then peach could fly so the hers was the uh Long jump because she's yeah. just jumping. Of course, just float to the end. That flutter kick that goes. Good yeah. choice. I great, always great like game. this 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 ending, and I thought it was really cool because you see like as he's sleeping, all the characters in the game, all the enemies scrolled up like in the white outline. Yeah, yeah. And then he wakes up. He's like, what? and then he goes back to sleep. No, it was cool. It was a very very. Di- it was a very different take on, on the Mario game, and it's uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was definitely a lot of fun. Wart, wart. So who it was the boss? Yes. Yeah. You'd yes. Had to kill them with vegetables. Yep, throw them with vegetables. Mm-hmm. Which I told you, vegetables are not good for you. 
Nobody believes me. Especially well, this like silver looking radish on the cover is kind of. I wouldn't eat that. He's like, I'm going back to the store to get orange. <laughs> I wouldn't eat anything that had a face. <laughs> My radish is looking at me. This is not good. <laughs> well, good job, sir. Thank you. Are we ready to move on to number one? Our number ones. We, you know what we should do? What Play should them do? both at once. All right. So no, no. <laughs> oh my! For season two, we should have like fanfare music when it comes up to our number ones, so like to separate it from the. There, the, there's, there's going to be some big changes, yeah, for season two. So yeah, I mean, it's. I'm very, I'm very excited for it. We've uh, been talking about a lot of ideas um, for what we want to do, and so we're gonna, we're gonna have that meeting at that wing restaurant you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, next and, week. Uh, get some root beer Which wings and. Uh, you know, next wings. week, if everybody uh, wants to come out to, uh, what is it, um, BJ's Brew House there in Oviedo, we will be there. I just realized next Sunday is Mother's Day as well. And she'll want some wings, too. <laughs> Bring mom. <laughs> <laughs> Root beer glazed wings, man. Come I, on. Let's do it. Absolutely love this game, Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII. Yes. One of, if not the greatest ending ever in a video game. I didn't get to play it because I never had a Vita or a PSP. Zack is my favorite character ever in Final Fantasy, and to be able to see his story, knowing... How he, I mean, if you did all the side stuff in, in Sevens, you, right. got, you got to see, and you just like, you got to actually play that moment. Forget about it. Forget about it. It was, that, that is that is singly the most emotional scene that I've ever seen in a video game. It doesn't even, it, it, it makes, it makes Eris' scene like somebody playing at a splash park. To me. And I've seen that. Yes. You don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> what is that what is that big guy doing over there? Why is he splashing? Why is he wearing a diaper? What? <laughs> but yeah, I, I was <laughs> we're, we're some creepy people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was uh, it was three I think it was yeah, it was three o'clock in the morning. I was overnight. I was doing overnight security and I played this. You do a lot of gaming when you were at work, I, aren't I did, you? I did. I did. I mean, there was nothing else to do. I could read and play games, that, you know, when I was doing overnights. And uh, it's just a security checkpoint. Yeah, yeah. it's not, fine. It wasn't. It wasn't Heck, go ahead. Well, hey, when it's pouring out, nobody's working on airplanes. It's very quiet. Matt was that guy in movies where, like, you see the video set up and like the criminals like getting up to stuff, and Matt's just like flipping through a <laughs> yeah. game informer. Hey, guys, like right there, reading over his shoulder, <laughs> like through the window. I was very vigilant. Just not when I played Crisis Core, because <laughs> I couldn't see my. There was so much water coming out of my eyes. It was uh, it was an amazing experience. Great game, and, and if, if you enjoy Seven, which I know Brian doesn't, but well, uh, I like this though. This is a like fun game one? to play. Yeah, yeah, and it for sure it made Cloud seem like such a wuss, because that was like half the game is like establishing Zach as like the person that Cloud wants to be. Yeah, right. And you just realize like Cloud is so. Pathetic or, or what? Well, he, like, well Cloud really kind of was. Yeah, he was just pathetic. a soldier, like a right. Sol- that, like. Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't like the focus of like seven. Like even though he was the main character, there was much better characters in that game than Cloud. He's yeah, just Kat Sith. Yeah, Kashi. Right here, credits. Tifa the credits could have taken wrong. out everybody by herself, but she was too hung up on Cloud. Right. It's a conspiracy. She was working with Sephiroth to get Aerith out of the picture Uh-oh. so she oh, could move in. There we go. And uh, da 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 if you know what I mean, right? Yep. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> High five? Uh, Anyone? Yeah, All yeah, right. I'll, I'll, All yeah. right. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it was really cool because, I mean, like, you know, when, when you play Seven for the first time, you're just like, Cloud is this badass character. Where did, where did he get that buster sword? And just the story behind that sword in itself. 
is just amazing, you know, and it just being passed down from Zach's Zach's mentor to essentially Cloud's mentor, and it, it's just it's, it's just brilliant. I mean, the the scene right before Zach goes off to face all the Shinra soldiers, and you just see Cloud's like hand go up before he like passes out from whatever I, I don't I guess he was famished or whatever whatever he passed out from he, was. his hair was you just perfect. see him, you just see Zach walking just pulling his sword out and it's just <laughs> he got stabbed on his own hair <laughs> <laughs> but the 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 great the greatest ending movie and fight ever in in history and and it's is on the PSP is on right. a fr- on right. a freaking handheld yeah so it's no, it just was great. Uh, and you know that the the song that plays when the final fight is called "The Price of Freedom," and that's actually going to be played at my funeral. I told my wife <laughs> that song is going to be played at my funeral. <laughs> nice. It's it's an amazing composition. So um, check it out if you haven't. Do you still have this? Yes, I do. I might have to borrow a Vita or a PSP, whatever it was played on, so I can play through this yeah, game. Because I absolutely. would like to play it. Yeah. But it's we're gonna amazing. we're gonna move on to my number one because we gotta we're gonna wrap this up. But we're gonna my number one. You ready for this? It's actually also got singing in it, but you can understand her. Yeah, well, it's, 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 already, not, it's already not good in my book. It's hard to, to believe that this is an ending theme for a video game. Like, you would fully expect this, like, in a movie or something, but not right. a video game. Right. <laughs> this is um, um, from Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Time only knows. And this game is very underrated, as much of my picks are. Um, but this, when I heard this song at the end of the game, I was absolutely blown away. Yeah blown away it's always great when they had these epic scores at the end because you're right i mean it feels like something that that would have been pulled right from a movie yeah right so, so the, this game this was a this was a ps2 game it was a ps2 game it was also a dream uh, um gamecube game okay and gamecube is what i played it on and this uh, how what game in the series was this because they've had a couple prince of persia games this was the first in its series and it's in this one okay. in this series was uh santa time then um uh, I forget the name of the second one, and there was there was three in the series like something Thrones, something of the Prince of Thrones, Game Prince of, of the Thrones, Thrones. <laughs> Shadow something, Shadow Shadow Game, Shadow Thief. Nice. <laughs> I, I try to throw I'm that in there. I'm just derailing everybody now. <laughs> no, I, I forget, but but it is the first of the series, nice. and um, it, it it takes place. You know, you just follow the same Prince of Persia from the first PC game. Yeah, and that game, uh, that game is all. Awesome. This game's all about time travel. And you, uh, so as you're playing through, like, say you're running up a wall or something like that, and you're dodging traps, like in classic Prince of Persia style. Yeah. You, uh, say you fall. If you have sands in your dagger for the sands of time, you can rewind it so you know that you don't, so you don't die. Oh, and nice. And then you can try it again. Oh, that's you know, cool. stuff like that. But if you don't have any sands left, you, you die. How do you collect the sands? They, you well, can, they have refilled enemies. stations, and you can fight enemies. Yeah. And, and you basically... If you kill them with the dagger, you absorb their soul, and their soul becomes the sand. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. But, yeah, this, this game is fantastic. And it's all about the dagger. They, it was actually good enough that they made a movie about it. Oh, so yeah. the, I was going to ask that. So yeah, the movie the they made was about, movie is Jake about Jake Gyllenhaal, this. Jake Ben Kingsley, and um, girl. Yeah, she was in another movie that I was like, what? That's her? Um, Amy Smart. Yep, that's it. Amy Smart. <laughs> 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 um, no, she, I want to say... I want to say she was the girl from um, the Mummy Two that was uh, the chick that, that that Imhotep was dating back in ancient oh, okay. Egypt. Oh, Imhotep. Imhotep. Okay. Yeah, it was her that plays the girl in in this movie. I know who you're talking about. Um, but yes, it is the Sands of Time. Nice. That's a good pick. Yeah, I like I, 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 I like I like the track. I, and, and, we, and we said it before going into it. I couldn't believe that this is a video game song. 
Oh, I was just going to tell you, Matt, you'd find this interesting. I don't know, Steve, if you would, but the little dagger time travel thing is the trick that people use to um, speedrun this game. Oh, really? Because you can like you can glitch it basically by by doing the dagger in the right places. You can like glitch through walls, so oh, you can wow. like pass checkpoints to skip cinematics and to skip other things. Oh, wow, that's really cool. So, yeah, it's. Uh, I was watching this like a week ago, and. Uh, just a, just a, like a one hour, one and one and a half hour speed run of it. Wow! And that's like all they they would just get to like close to a wall, and like take a, like a couple of steps, and then they would like rewind themselves, and then they'd show the character like passing through the wall. <laughs> it's amazing how people wow. figure, this, figure this stuff out, you know. Well, Breaking games, you know. But what I do like about the song, my last thing I want to say about the song is that it sounds like Prince of Persia. No, it does. For sure. It, it yeah. absolutely fits yeah. that motif of that song. Is the music of this caliber throughout the game itself? Would you say no, that it's this good, is but not this caliber. Yeah, nothing like this. Okay. Yeah, but it, it's still good music all the way through, yeah. but not like this. Cool. Well, good first pick. I think we both had some. I yeah, think, absolutely. I think these, li- these lists were, were pretty solid. A lot of emotional tracks. And you ended on, on not an emotional track, more of a an upbeat, which is good, because I was seriously on the verge of crying back there. <laughs> A lot of lyrics, too. A lot of lyrics, a lot of, too. A lot of ending game lyrics. A lot of RPGs. Yeah. Yeah. True. I, I think because I think because they just, man, you're so built up after playing for X amount of hours, you know, that yeah. you're just like, wow, I'm either very relieved it's over or I'm very disappointed that it's over. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you just kind of get a, oh, are they going to put a number two? Yay. Or Yeah. No, exactly. Because you got, I mean, some of the shorter games, you're just like, all right, I mean, like Contra, like, it's a great track, and, and and that's why I picked it. But it was, you know, I didn't want to pick just all, like, RPGs. So I was like, what game was I just so thrilled to, to beat? beat? And I was yeah. like, I loved it when I beat Contra for the first time. And and the track is actually really awesome. It's very upbeat. It's like, all right. Just like, you're just flicking the rest of the world off. Being like, that's right. <laughs> I beat that alien's ass, and now we're... Uh, Flying on a helicopter. Yeah. Now let's get to the chopper. You know? Well, at I least it wasn't just, a, like, a, a game over screen. Like, you beat the game. And instead of like you know the end, here's what the characters are. It's just like game over. Yeah. Like what do you mean game over? Like I beat it. Give me some credit here. Jurassic Park for the Super NES was the one time I wanted to put a hammer to my. (laughs) 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 It's like (laughs) this game is so great. All I get is a you escape the island. Game over. Game over. <laughs> Next, <laughs> <laughs> all right, taking this back to Blockbuster. This in the That's street. Uh, I'm gonna go run Aladdin on the Super Nintendo and uh, love life. There you go. Beat my head against the wall. It's better. Whoa, whoa it's it's calm it down there, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so yeah, so the overall good episode. If you liked it, um, be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes. Follow us on Facebook. Send me an email at cashrevive@gmail.com. We're also on Twitter at cashrevive. Um, we got an event coming up on this Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be at the BART on uh, Mills running a uh, Star Wars um, Atari uh, cabinet tournament there. So go ahead and come us out, uh, come on out and see us. It's on Mills in Orlando. And then the 20th of this month, we're ha- la- having a uh, launch party for our collaborative project called uh, Geek Street Station with Al Sterling from uh, For Geek's Sake and Zach Crawford of the Thirsty Gamers. So go ahead and check them out on Facebook and subscribe and follow all their social media. And um, they're great. They're great guys. We got a lot of really awesome prizes um, from uh, Royal Empire Gaming donated some stuff. Uh, Barrett Biggers and Josh Bauer um, donated some amazing stuff for, for our event. So I'll go ahead and put their information um, in the links below so you guys can follow them and show them some love because they're, they're fantastic people. And I just want to say real quick, I want to give a big shout out. Thanks to all the people who have responded to us on Facebook and, and let us know what you wanted to hear. And as you've have heard we we play all your requests so you yep. know keep them coming absolutely what are, what are we what are you closing us out here with brian still alive from uh, portal one of the only Yay. non-rpgs i've ever beaten very well very uh, very good choice i know a lot of people love this track i so. love this track first time i heard this a group of children sang it and i'm like what is <laughs> this? like a choir and i'm like <laughs> what is this? this is super creepy but it's awesome very good. Well, uh, thank you guys uh, very much for listening. And next week is our season finale. We're gonna, Steve and I are going to be doing a, a head off, name that tune against Woo! each other. So um, it's gonna going be a, down, it's Matt. Gonna, it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, we don't exactly know what's going to be involved, but Brian's going to put something together and 
see who comes out uh, victorious as the VGM master for season one. So thank you all again for listening, and we'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs>